Okay guys, uh, just throw together a quick video here of the most recent Torwatopia stage. Um, I did the dirt digging, I think it's called the gravel stage anyway, stage four. Um, it's quite an interesting race, five laps around a new route and a new event badge, um, which went pretty well actually it was quite an interesting race one of the more interesting races I've done for a while five times up a, up a hill um, really broke the field up it meant it wasn't the bunch race that a lot of the tour Utopia has been um, and yeah uh, from about halfway in it became quite an interesting quite a hard race so hope you enjoy it uh, we get into it fairly quickly I haven't got a long intro uh, and I'll talk to you through a couple of the interesting bits cheers Okay, so the start's been pretty easy. Um, a group of us heading off, it's kind of downhill all the way at the start, so um, a group does go off at the front, but uh, through to the end of the lead-in um, and then continuing downhill before the climb back up. Um, so we'll jump straight forward to the, group, uh, the climb um, because the first uh, few minutes of this race were, were pretty easy. First time up the com here. Uh, it's a fairly easy climb. It isn't. It isn't steep, uh, but it's enough to separate the group a little bit. Uh, I think there was about 30 or 40 that came into the bottom of this together. You can see it's strung out already, um, but it isn't very hard. A little bit of uh, threshold just holds the pack uh, together. Uh, nicely for me. We've got a pro in this race and I'm going to talk about the pro a little bit um, uh, because he became a, a target um, not just because he was a pro but also the way the race unfolded uh, he was a pretty important uh, player in it for me so I, I, I really just tried to mark him up this hill I figured that if anyone uh, tried to get away he would probably go with it um, and as long as I sat in a group with him, that group would probably sit together. And that's certainly what happened up the first of these climbs. So, yeah, uh, over the top of this one and uh, downhill. Um, and I uh, will talk to you again on the next climb.
the second time up the climb, very much like the first. Uh, still a group of about 20 people here. Doesn't string out quite so much because obviously the first separation uh, and selection was made last time around. Uh, still sitting really no more than, than tempo and threshold for most of this. Still marking um, this pro. Uh, by the way, this, this chap, uh, Cyril Bath, I'm sorry, probably butchered your name there. Uh, so he rides for uh, b and uh, hotels in the pro peloton. He's actually ridden the last two Tour de France. Uh, well, the last two Tour de France's. So he's a he's a proper proper pro. He's a bit of a sprinter actually. I noticed he finished ninth on the Champs Elysees in that uh, great finish to the last Tour de France, where Cav and Wout van Aert uh, were sprinting, with Cav going for the for the record number of stages and, and Wout van Aert uh, completing the hat trick of totally different stage wins. Uh, it was quite memorable. Uh, well, this chap was was ninth, um, so right up there in in the sprint finish. So. Um, that you get a lot of pros on on Zwift, and, and sometimes um, you know they're very much uh, uh, pro Conti. Now B and B are a pro Conti team, but um, they they were always at the Tour de France, and, and finishing ninth in that stage is not messing about. He's also a former under twenty three uh, French national champion, so this chap uh, has real pedigree. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I didn't know that at the time, but uh, I certainly do now. Um, so yeah. This climb, again, not too spicy, um, but things change third time round. Now, this time uh, things are a bit different. We're back on the climb again, third lap of, of five, um, but someone's gone off the front. So Jay White, uh, not this guy, this is someone being lapped, but the person ahead of me now, four seconds ahead, Jay White doing six watts per kilo. Um, I'd moved to the front just to get a view of who had gone off the front and what they were doing. When I saw they were doing six watts per kilo, I sat back down and, and thought I'd let the group pull them across. Um, however, I see here this, this uh, Chinese uh, chap again, a little difficult to see with back mark as you can see now, uh, Zuzi, um, I'm sorry I probably butchered that name as well, um, going across and I think, well actually if I can sit on this person, uh, they can drag me across and I had a little look at the map, if you look now, we've left the, the, the group behind, uh, so the peloton is about three, four back. Uh, that pro I pointed out is, is sat there, he hasn't come. Um, and I've committed at this point, I've decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this uh, Chinese rider pull me across to, to Jay White. Um, and maybe the three of us um, can, can leave this group behind. We're, we're now seven, eight seconds behind, so I've decided definitely committing to this. I don't wanna go on the front, um, not yet anyway, uh, but I'll let them, them do the work. And, uh, and and that's how it works out. So he does pull us across. Um, we are we are a group of three. The group is now 10, 11 seconds behind, um, and we continue to go up. So this is it's actually one of the first times I've tried a breakaway with a with a group and, and thought it might stick. I knew at this point there's a downhill to come. The the, the, se the second half of this lap, the start of the next is all downhill, and the, the group behind is going to have an advantage there. Um, but uh, it doesn't ever quite come back. So let's go ahead. We'll uh, we'll go downhill. You'll see them uh, start to catch us. The the eleven and, and so seconds we've got here dwindles, but uh, it's still interesting the way the way this goes down. So let's skip forward, and we will pick it up on that four.
So lap four, back on the Mayan bridge, which is where the uh, descent turns back into a climb. Three of us out in the lead, but you can see the group um, has caught. Uh, there's four seconds back now um, to the group that include that uh, pro uh, from France. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's an interesting point in the race, this. I, I wasn't sure uh, whether someone would bridge across. I wasn't sure whether they would catch us at all or whether we would stretch the lead again um, back out. And, and it, 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 a bit of both happens. So firstly, the three seconds continues to drop, but actually all that happens is one person comes across and it is, uh, it is our French pro. Um, he's three seconds behind here, but you can see he's next on the road behind me now. Um, still three seconds with the others in his group, uh, but but in the next uh, few hundred meters, really, he comes across um, and and he comes across alone. Um, two seconds here, you see it's happening now. He's making the bridge. Um, he will appear over my shoulder shortly, um, and then what happens is we go off together. So the three of us that have been out front and him. Uh, crack on up the hill and I don't know if mentally his his group uh, that he was riding with allow him to go because of because of who he, he is or whether whether just not strong enough to to come across but there he is now he's just appeared with us um, the rest of his group is still three seconds behind so I think he probably sprinted across because he was two or three seconds back and then suddenly he was with us um, the others, uh, oh actually no, they, they've caught us. There are a couple here at this point. Jay Henrik uh, is up here with us, uh, but he definitely drops back off because live in the race, I never actually noticed him. Um, and yeah, the four of us, the original three in the breakaway um, and, uh, and our French pro um, gradually stretch away again and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll play it on a bit more on fast forward and you can watch watch that happen uh, before we get to the, the downhill. You see here Jay Henrik's now a second behind so it started to happen. He started to um, drop back from us um, and that, that continues because um, I don't see him for the rest of the race. Okay, so here we are, final time up the climb, uh, back on the bridge where that climb starts and the four of us are together. Uh, we, we kept the gap on the, on the descent. Uh, the, the group closed up again, uh, just four, five seconds back, uh, but that's as close as they ever get now. Um, going up this hill, we stretch away uh, from them, the four of us, uh, but shortly our four uh, becomes two groups of two. So our French pro here attacks off the front, um, doing five and a half, six and a half watts per kilo. Um, I think about going with him, but I decide he's going to keep attacking. I don't have that. I know I'm not, at this point, I'm five and a bit, six and a bit myself. I've, I've, heart rate wise, I've still got a bit left, 
but I just didn't see me competing with him and I decided that I would I would make do with competing with my with the other two here Jay White um, and the Chinese rider in a second Jay White uh, goes across and I, I decide to let him go too because he goes across at sort of seven watts per kilo um, and I'm not really feeling feeling like like that to be honest um, it turns out I don't I don't know this guy's background I don't know whether he's on uh, uh, Z power or, or, or a wheel on trainer or whether he's just not on Swift power but either way this guy has no Swift power account so I have no idea uh, of Jay White's um, uh, you know whether he's a real racer I, I do nearly all my races with with dual power um, and uh, so I know I know I'm um, legit but if someone's not on Swift power then I don't worry too much about them so effectively we are racing without Jay White at this point but I didn't know that I thought the podium was going to be three from four so I focus on keeping up with the Chinese rider that's hard enough you can see at this point I've slightly dropped off him but I do manage to keep up with him up the climb um, the other two stretch away slowly as, as we go up and I, and I allow that to happen I'm about to go over 180 beats per minute heart rate and that's uh, that's kind of very much red zone for me certainly 45 minutes in um, being above 180 beats per minute is is not easy territory um, and so I, I make do with um, still doing five and a half watts per kilo uh, 50 minutes in so you know this is this is a good performance for, for me I'm really pleased with this but the guys up in front are doing six um, and I'm not going to uh, not going to be able to keep that up um, be too 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 far above where I'm at with 180 beats per minute already so uh, yep yeah, I'll skip on to the end
Coming into the finish now, uh, 400 meters to go. I tried to get the Chinese chap to lead out, which he does. Um, I actually let him go a little bit too much here, and I and I panic and have to, to catch him. Uh, but with a couple of hundred meters to go, he starts his sprint, and I'm in his draft. There's no power up, but to be honest, this was quite an easy sprint for me. Um, I managed to sit in his slipstream and then uh, go past comfortably, and uh, and yeah, I finish third, I think. Um, though afterwards, looking at Zwift Power, as I mentioned, Jay White uh, is not there, so second, um, and the French pro I've talked about before uh, was first, but you know, Tour de France rider, he was first, I'm second on Zwift Power, I'm going to take that all day long. So yeah, really successful race, um, was quite kind of hard without being totally brutal, uh, exactly what I want a Tour Rotopia to be. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, it really helps me out. I'm trying to grow this channel um, from scratch and uh, anyone uh, helping out at this stage would be uh, enormously appreciated. So yeah, please like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye-bye.